Hey everybody, so these are these little gathered bunches of uh, fake foliage that you can get at the craft store. These were $6.99, but I went when they were having a half off sale. Um, so I actually got these all for about uh, like 16 bucks, I think, you know, including some change. But uh, I'm gonna show you how you can use these, um, the ones that are in a smaller scale, the leaves that are um, smaller in overall size. And you can actually use these and some hot glue. This is one of the rare occasions where I actually will use hot glue. I actually avoid hot glue. More on that later. Um, but I'm going to be making uh, little foliages for these miniature planters that I made. These are just made of insulation foam. You can see the basics of how I constructed them there. And they are filled with rocks and rubble. And uh, that's just got some black wash and some stuff on it. I'm going to finish painting those rocks later. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and make the uh, foliage that is going to get inserted into these planters. And it really doesn't need to be complex. Um, they're also going to cover up my little imperfections in here, my little areas in my planters that are not so great. So you can make some of these out of, um, you know, wood or foam or uh, balsa wood or even concrete if you want to get crazy. Make yourself some little miniature um, terracotta pots or whatever you got and uh, you can put some plants in them. And so I'm going to show you just, it's really, really simple um, basics of how to do that. And of course, these are the two that I went with for this project. There's this uh, kind of large, round, succulent looking leafy one. And this one that's got these fine, more fern-like branches. But there is all kinds of stuff that you can get. These are probably a little bit too big in scale. These would look better maybe on the outside of something. But there's all kinds of little things you can get. I would encourage you to just go to the hobby store and explore and think about what scale you're gonna be working in and how that uh, those size of the leaves or the size of the foliage is gonna to translate to how small or big your scale is. Forgive my fingernails, I have been black washing and painting uh, for the last several days, so you're just gonna to have to deal with it, all right? Thank you. Basically, some of these are wired and they have actual wires in them. Let me check. See, this one does. See how that bent and stayed? And I can bend it up like that. This one has a wire in the lower section that carries up through the top to looks like right there where this crowning piece is and there's little nubbins that's what i'm going to call them um, on the end of this that this is heated over so you can see it's actually melted right there oops sorry let me clear this all away see that how it's actually melted onto there you can pull these off see that that's where the end of the wire is and those are melted off so you can just pull these off if you want and then if, as you go down that garland strand, there's these like little triple pieces, little tri, tri corner pieces here where these are melted on and you can break those off or you can slide the little triple pieces off and you'll have little already pre-arranged foliages. So if I slide that triple piece off, I've already got kind of a foliage looking thing. Now this is a little tall and a little big. If you were doing larger scale or a big bush, you could gather, you know, bunches of these up like this and as you gather a bunch and you kind of pull, keep them in a central point um, once you stick it down it'll look like a bush I mean it even does now it just looks like a thinner bush maybe a newer bush um, but as you do that you can basically pull pieces off or you can even get in there with scissors if you want and you know nip them off in this case it kind of is just as easy to pull them off or you can even leave them on this wire and cut the base of the wire with wire cutters and sometimes uh, scissors will work and you can arrange um, them from the base and just with the wires, stick them straight into your foam base. Let me show you really quick. If I just cut this off like that with my, I, would, I don't recommend using scissors. I would maybe go with the center cutting portion on needle nose pliers. That'll achieve the same thing. You see right there, I can, and that yeah, doesn't want to come out, but where'd it go? It's gone. There it is. So you can cut off the portion with needle nose pliers to uh, get the same thing. You don't have to use scissors because you might ruin your scissors if you don't have super strong scissors. But basically at this point, all you have to do is just shove that into the base and bam, planter done. No, not really. I mean, for what I'm trying to do, this is way too big of a plant. But if what you're trying to do, this might work, go for it. So I'm gonna make some smaller pieces and this, see that it just sticks right through the foam. And I would go under here and just put a dab of glue and push it back through and then maybe put a piece of masking tape here while the tape dries and then I can flip it back over and it won't glue to the table. I do that all the time with glue. 
if they have to if I have to stick something through the base of a piece of foam I will just get a uh, painters tape or masking tape like this and I will squirt the glue in there and cover this like that so that I can like continue setting this down and moving it around and not worry about it sticking to another piece because when most glues dry uh, most glues do not stick to the sticky side of a tape. Um, I've discovered that. I was kind of an accident I discovered years ago. And so I will use this method to wait for glues to dry on seams where I need to keep moving pieces around or things like that. So I will do that. And when it's done, you just peel it off and your glue will, should be nice and dry and it'll be nice and flat as well. You don't have to like clean it up or anything. But I am not going to do this big method for my little planters here. I'm going to make some smaller arrangements. And that's what the hot glue is for. Uh, because this stuff, remember I showed you, it's melted with heat, it responds well to heat. So I'm going to grab some of these nubbins off. And I'm just going to pull a bunch of them off of this and then arrange them after I'm done. And you see you get this little tree if you just pull them off of nubbins. And then you can slide those off. And then you have uh, plastic green coated wire. If you uh, have an idea what you could use that for, you know, maybe you could do something with the green coated wire as well. So all kinds of little things you discover when you try new techniques, right? I'm sure there's something someone can do with that. Bing. And when I go to trim these up, um, this is way too tall. I want them to be like, probably like half this tall. And you see where these branches taper off here at these Y intersections. That's essentially where I'm gonna cut and like re or redirectionalize the branch. So in this case, I'm gonna cut this one right here at the base of this Y where it comes down here. I'm not gonna cut it off. I'm just gonna cut it here just to show you. Now I have this one and it branches this way, but it's shorter now. It was that tall. Now I have two pieces. And then if I take this one and I cut it off at this base of this Y, now it's way shorter and now I have three pieces, right? So you can do that to whatever desired uh, length that you want. Of course, you know, you could keep cutting and cut this one in half or shorter. You can cut off that Y, you can cut off this base, but for now, I'm gonna do like this and probably make bunches of maybe four or five of these. And uh, I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is essentially cut these up and I just kinda line them up as I cut them. Right, some of these are different sizes as well. Like this whole one is much different in size than the other ones. So I see there's a space here where there's not a lot of leaves. So I'm gonna cut off at the tip of that. So this now has a base and this one stops short. And so it's got this sort of rogue branch coming off in the middle now. I'm just gonna cut that off, make it look a little cleaner. And I also have this, I could use this as trash. You can even get crazy and cut the leaves off of these if you have these in your diorama. And then if this is the foliage you're gonna use in your diorama, cut like, you know, a handful, small handful of leaves off. And when you go to take a photograph or you can even glue them down, sprinkle them around your diorama and then it looks like leaves came off of, see it already looks good right there. Leaves came off of the plants and spread around your diorama. Cohesiveness, it's a good thing. So just gonna keep doing that here. And yeah. All right, that's probably good to start with. Let me move these out of the way so you can see this a little bit easier. And um, all I did, this is just what, two pieces, two branches that I pulled off of this. So. I have uh, the one that I pulled off here and the one that I cut off here. And look how much there is left. All of this left. And I have these other ones to do. So there is a ton of material if you're working in a smaller scale. Like I would say uh, between 1 12th and 1 6th. These are, are excellent for this. And even bigger if you want to do smaller pieces. Um, but this is, again, a quick, easy way. You don't have to make everything from scratch. And so this is a really easy way to keep providing yourself with leaves. And you can even paint this stuff. The paint doesn't stick super well, but you can add um, washers and stuff over this. And just keep in mind, it doesn't necessarily stay very well, but it does. It can achieve a temporary effect if you want to do that. <laughs>
So, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke some holes in this diorama. I might not need to paint this. I might actually leave this black. It might achieve a nice shading effect uh, down the road. Or I can go back in there with washes after my bushes are on there. So I'm gonna use this large nail. Um, of course, you could just do this with a toothpick if you're working with foam. If you're not working with foam, because this works with other things, it doesn't have to work with foam. In this case, I'm gonna glue the bases together and then I'm gonna stick them into the holes that I create with this nail ahead of time. Now, if you're dealing with um, MDF or plywood or whatever your base is, you can of course drill that and prep the hole or you can do it without a hole and just glue it flat to a base. You're just gonna have to hold it while the, of course the hot glue cools so that it doesn't just fall over on you. So. Again, I'm going to pick some of the, maybe some of the, maybe like, well, I have that hole that I already created before and oops, some of my stuff's coming off because the paint's not dry because I work too fast and I'm going to put a hole right here and a hole right here. I don't know. Maybe I'll start with five, maybe four or five spots and just see how that looks and right there. They're hard to see, but uh, we'll find them as we need them. So, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of bigger, well, one in the middle, I forgot one in the middle, maybe a uh, bigger in the middle, a bigger collection of branches in the middle, and then smaller ones around it to try to create that, you know, flowering out effect or the branching out effect, so to speak. So get some of the taller pieces here, maybe those, and this one. leaves off I want some so you want some space here at the bottom of the stems for them to be kind of bunched together grab one more one more tall one I'm gonna pull these leaves off they're too close to the base for what we're about to do okay so now I've got four pieces and keep in mind when this is done you'll be able to kind of arrange these a little bit but it's good to do uh, kind of a basic arrangement of how you want them because this is going to kind of put them in somewhat of a position that looks pretty good. So now as long as I don't move them around too much, I'm gonna keep them, yeah, like that. And you could go get hemostats to hold these if you wanted to, like these. And you could crimp them together like this and do your hot gluing. If, if you don't have one of these, it's okay. You can just hold it. You just wanna be careful not to burn yourself while you're holding it. I'm gonna go ahead and use the uh, hemostats since I have them. Gather these back together a little closer. Make sure that looks how I want when I face it up. Yeah, that looks nice. All right, and now we're gonna take, this is a extra hot, hot glue gun. It gets a little hotter. Just gonna splooch the glue right here. Just kind of go around it. You don't have to go too crazy, but don't wanna go too much. And I just do that to get the little webs of glue. And this is hot glue. This is hot, hot glue. So it's going to take a second to cool down. I'm gonna hold it this way so that it doesn't glue to my hemostat, which it might've already done that. But you can see what it is doing. There it is. Sorry, hard to see. Lots of little wispy lines. And then probably still not totally dry yet no yep see that <clears throat> probably should have just held it I'm gonna go ahead and blow on it <laughs> get it to cool off there we go that's much better now it's soft and a little bit pliable you can kind of push it how I want it Okay, so now I stuck this hole and this is a little bit larger of a gather than I was originally explaining when I poked these initial holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get, I'm gonna use my hemostats here. I'm gonna just kind of work this hole a little bit wider. I could even take pliers, do the same thing. There we go. Now we have a large hole in the center. You can see my hand through there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do a dab of hot glue in the center. Doesn't need to be significant, just something to keep it in place. Cause the hot glue is also gonna melt the foam a little bit. You can kind of use that to your advantage as sort of part of the gluing process. Now that this is cooled and this is hot, I'm going to merge the two 
and I'm just going to push it into the indention that I made. Just kind of hold it there and maneuver it a little bit while it's still warm. And there we go. So there is our first little plant in a planter. Not too shabby. So now I'm going to take probably just single ones and stick them in the holes around it and have them be much smaller. And I might use my hemostats for that as well. There's a plane flying overhead, like right here. I'm going to cut this one off and use this one. And I'm going to grab this so I can poke it into the hole easier. Don't say it. Here we go. Some blue. Don't got to go crazy, just enough. Like even that's probably more than enough. And find one of your holes and stick it in the hole. And with the hemostats, like I said, I can push it in with that, unlock it. If you don't know where to get hemostats, if you have a Harbor Freight Tools near you, they usually carry some. Um, you can also find them at um, medical supply stores. Um, but typically, uh, hardware stores um, will have them somewhere because they are used for like mechanical repair and electrical repair. Uh, you know, small stuff, hobby stuff. Hobby stores will have these, but to be honest, they'll probably be way too expensive at a hobby store. Um, you know, I think Harbor Freight has these for a couple of dollars a piece, maybe three or four dollars a piece. I incidentally got a giant pile of them at a, an estate sale. I got like 10 different sizes for like 10 bucks. Um, but you really only need one or two, maybe one with a flat tip and one with a curved tip like this. Um, about this size is fine for just about anything that you could think of to do uh, in the miniature world. So um, you can also get super tiny fine ones and they're very helpful. Um, but, uh, you know, don't be too uh, dedicated to this. You could have done all this. Uh, you could do all this with pliers. In fact, I'll do the next one with a pair of needle nose pliers like this. These are, I think, like $1.97. So no big deal. Uh, you don't have to go with the hemostats if you can't find any, but I'll just do it with this just to show you. Same thing can, same thing can be achieved. Go ahead and use this one. I'm gonna trim that off. It's ugly, I don't like it. Okay, and then again, I'm gonna do this at a down angle. If I do it like this, then I can't get it into the piece and I'll have to reorient this while there's hot glue on it. So I'm gonna do it like this at an angle so that when I go to push it in the piece, I'll have some force above it. All right, get some glue, just enough around it. And find one of the holes and push it in. Yeah, it'll work like a charm. And I'm gonna turn it because I kind of put it the wrong way. There we go. Now we see one, two, we got three plants, bigger one in the middle. And I think maybe we'll do two or three more and we'll see how that looks. Something you can do, I'm not doing it just because I've done this a lot, but if you're not confident that that piece is going to look good, you can do a test fit, of course. If you have your hole pre-poked and just slide the uh, piece of foliage in without um, any glue, of course, and just do a little test fit. See if that's going to look kind of the way you're envisioning it there, right? Does that look like what you want? For me, it does. So I'm going to go ahead and just use that piece. I'm going to use my hemostats again and glue this one in.
All right, that looks pretty good and check it out. Nothing falls out. By the time I get done uh, with the last piece, everything else is cooled and dried. And working with the foam, that glue is gonna go into the foam and expand the foam a little bit and attach even harder to the foam. So these are gonna be hard to take out, you know. They're, so you're basically, see that? One of my rocks fell out, but that looks pretty darn good. And I can even get in here with a brush and do washes on my rocks. And uh, if I wanted to get some brown and do some dry brushing, you could do that on the bases if you wanted to look more woody, but this is gonna suffice for what I want. This is essentially just background decoration. Now, looking at this, these two things are a little higher than I want them to be, but I can just go in and trim them off afterwards. Trim this one as well. That's just a little too big. Here we go. That looks a little bit better to me. What do you think? Looks pretty darn good. And so what I said earlier too, like about the leaves, all the little cutoffs and stuff that you know you're not gonna use, take them, maybe get a little paper cup like that, like so, and just cut off the leaves into the cup. So if you know you're not gonna use this one, like I'm not gonna use this one because it looks so wonky, I'm just gonna take this and collect these leaves off of this as it flies across the room and out into the cup. There we go. Across the room. There we go. Go in the cup. We even got smaller leaves up here at the top. All right, and just gather your leaves up and then you've got stuff to sprinkle around your diorama. And if you want to, you can even save these stems, uh, you know, if they're small enough. This kind of doesn't look realistic. If you, if you can think of something to use for that, then go ahead, but I'm gonna toss mine uh, across the room. But these little twigs can even be used, like even the detail on that, you see that? That looks pretty legit. So if you've got that laying in the corner, I'm gonna sell for that realism. And so now you've got leaves that you can just scatter around the diorama as uh, loose foliage. Why don't we do a few more? All right, so these are uh, got the uh, second type of foliage that I had on hand in it. I just cut off one of these branches and I just uh, took off all the little nubbins and did this. That does look a little thin to me, to be honest with you. So I'm probably gonna either double it up or maybe even add some of this stuff in between to give it uh, a different impression. All right, so those are a little bit denser now. I think they look a little bit more appropriate if they're framed like one behind another and stuff. I think it'll look pretty darn good. And these can even be trimmed down. The photographer I'm sending these to uh, can trim them down and I know he watches some of my content. So maybe he'll change them, who knows? But that was the goal and we achieved it. We've got four little uh, planter boxes made out of insulation foam and uh, foliage. And you see how cheap and easy that is? I mean, I bought four of these for um, 350 a piece because they were on sale half off. And these bushes will probably last me 
at the rate that I use them like this, probably two or three years. And I also have maybe a, a dozen other pieces of foliage like this that I've collected that I bought that I liked because the scale worked. And you can do the same thing too, you know, collect a bunch of pieces and uh, mess around with this. You can make hanging vines with, like this. You can put planters on the sides of buildings with this. You can put in bushes growing out in between rocks and concrete. There's all kinds of cool stuff. Some of it I've already done, some of it I'm going to do. And I'd love to see what you guys do. So please, again, like and subscribe, comment Comment below tell me what you think and tag me when you guys create something with this technique or something similar let me know i'd love to see it thank you very much and have a planterful day